What's going on, everybody? This is D1. I represent one half of Reminisce Over You. My other partner, Felicia Perry, she is in the cut in the background. We are downtown St. Paul, Minnesota at the Bedlam Lower Town, representing our debut of our show. I want you to know it's going to be a good one. We are going to cover some throwback moments because today's show is the debut and it will be a throwback moment at one point in its own. We're going to interview some people, talk about some shows, talk about some of their upcoming and how they will be. So stick and stay right here on Reminisce Over You. Welcome to Reminisce Over You. I am your host, Dispute One. We are on location downtown St. Paul at the Bedlam Lower Town. This man, this individual, this character on my left, your right, is an all-star. He is a staple of the Twin Cities. He is a St. Paul bearer to be exact. You have the one, the only, Glow Pesci representing the Abstract Pack. What's good with you, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. Glad to be here, man. Okay, okay. Sure. Now, this is going to be a throwback show one day, man. I mean, because this is the debut of Reminisce Over You, where we talk about anything and everything that brings you back in time, and you represent that to the fullest. And being that you are a pioneer like myself to the Twin City scene here, I figured we would talk about something real basic and real not too heavy, but something that helped us be who we are, throwback television shows. Now, we all know my favorite here is Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son was the American dreamer, the the ultimate hustler, the junkyard junk man that ran his business with a, with a serious, serious fist. So for you, brother, being as influential as you have been, what is your favorite throwback television show? Um, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Good Times, man. Oh, Good Times. I would have to say Good Times. Okay, so tell me a little bit about why that's your favorite show, man. So to see that, that dad be protective and securing and kind of like, you know, what I say kind of goes kind of deal, not because I'm the dude, it's because I feel it's what's best for the family. So it wasn't about, you know, Florida not being as important because she was like the moral backbone, the moral compass of the the, um, the setup, just like, my, just like my mother. I love good times because um, James Evans always was coming home with some kind of an issue going on. JJ was a hot mess. Um, Michael was always getting in trouble with kind of on the racist side and that's a big thing that's going on even right now today. Um, and then just even the characters that they brought in like Janet Jackson when she was young and you know little things that happened but I love good times. We used to sit down and watch that. It didn't matter what was going on in the house. When it came on we all sat down and was watching everything. So and Thelma was beautiful so it was just a good show. And the family togetherness too because you know, you're talking 80s, to my 83, 84-ish, stuff like that. That's when stuff started falling apart as far as family staying together. And um, and so it was, it, you know, holding on to that last bit of, you know, we may be poor, we may be black, we may not live in the, the, the best neighborhood, but we're together and we're all we got and that's enough, you know what I mean? And so it just kind of represented all, that, all those kind of things to me and it was dope, man. Now, out of all the characters on Good Times, if they were to do a Where Are They Now, which one would you really be interested in seeing? Oh, wow. Um, I think I would want to know what's going on with JJ. Yes. <laughs> out of all of them. I mean, he's probably around doing something, but yeah, that'd be awesome to know what he's got going on. Does he have a family? What, you know, what is life like for him at this point? And I'm sure he would have some kind of hilarious comment uh, or something going on too. So yeah. you can always expect that from JJ. And, and that show definitely was influential in my life. Okay. So basically that show was all about what your struggle was, which was trying to understand who you were and where you were from a male's perspective and not having that around that kind of filled that void. It kind of told your story without having to tell your stories. My ultimate favorite is Martin Lawrence. My favorite. All right. What about Martin? Give me give me a moment on Martin that uh, that sticks out to you and why. There's so many that's really tough, but I'll say why, only because like growing up in my era, comedy was rare, and that was the first piece of comedy that I had growing up in my my arena, and so Martin just kind of reached to me in my era. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching Martin. One of my things I remember about Martin is every day, uh, the next day in school, everybody coming into homeroom and saying, you know, did you watch Martin? Did you watch Martin? And then we'd be re replaying back and forth uh, the different scenes that happened. Favorite character? 
Of course, Martin. Martin? Yeah. Just the, the straight Martin or like the, Jerome or... Yeah, I like the Rocco. straight Martin. Like, I wasn't too fond of the female side of him. But mm -hmm. again, that was my era. Yeah. You know, now I can watch all of it. And it's and I could watch all of it then, but you couldn't really talk about that in my household, so we just had to stick with Martin. So it was a <laughs> guilty pleasure as well. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. I hope you guys enjoyed the show here at the Bedlam Theater. Yes. Thank you so much for being on Reminisce Over You. Once again, you have reached Reminisce Over You. I am your host, Dispute One. Currently, we are downtown St. Paul at the Bedlam, the lower town, representing the debut of our show. And I have next to me an entrepreneur who is doing his thing on the Twin Cities scene, musically, hip-hop-wise, Sean Lyrics, and the place to be. How you doing, mate? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, okay. Okay, why don't you let everybody know here really quick who you are, what you got going on, man, off top. All right, I'm Sean Lyrics. I have a, I have a mixtape. That I just released is called The Chase. Um, it's full of hip hop and R&B music. And what I do is a more positive twist on music. You know, I, I don't cuss at any of my music. You know, everything I do is uplifting, motivating. And I'm just out here trying to collaborate with some real talented people, real talented artists, as well as um, just getting mixed up in, in, in the media and, and doing like photography, video, graphic design. You know, I like all the inter entertainment aspects and, and, and giving back you know, helping other people out. You know, I do a little bit of managing here and there because, you know, I, and in artist development because I want people in, in, in my city, you know, I'm from Minneapolis, but I, I mess with St. Paul too. And I want I want people, you know, to, to really come up and really know how to put a, put a song together, make some music, you know, so I'm out here just, you know, for the artistry. Excellent. So my man said he is the one-stop auto shop for everything that you need artistically. That's how he gets down. So for you, Mr. Lyrics, what is your favorite throwback television show and why? I would have to say, I would have to go with Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air because for one, when I was younger, Will Smith was my favorite rapper. You know, I mean, you know, he, he did his thing with the whole sampling and, and, you know, making some new hits, but he always, he always kept it classy and kept it positive, you know, and, you know, and he's out here making moves. You see him today, A-lister, you know, yes, sir. so I, I go with him. Well, one of my favorite throwback TV shows of all time definitely is Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Definitely. Like, it, 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 it resonated with me because I, my hometown is originally from Milwaukee, and I hail in St. Paul. But before that, um, while I be here, my mom will always tell me, like, oh, my God, I used to always watch this show because you always remind me of Will, and you always acting all crazy, and da 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 But it hit home to me, man. Just just a guy just, just came from out the gutter and came up in another family that's in a different atmosphere, different environment and and learned so much and built so much of himself you know what i'm saying that he didn't even know from even back home that if he would have stayed there who knows what would have happened so i think that kind of relates to my struggle because if i wouldn't have left milwaukee i probably wouldn't even be here sitting with you because it was it was hectic down there so i had to move up here to my dad's side where the environment is even better the the air is even cleaner and you know i, I got my mind right and that, that show really means a lot to me. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, my favorite show of all time. Okay, was there any one moment in any of those shows that stands out where you just like, I can't believe he did that of all things? Well, I do remember specifically the one episode when he was talking about, you know, how come his dad didn't want him. And, and turns out behind the scenes that he really did break down on set in, in front of Phil because you know, it, it really was happening in his life, and it, and it, and I felt like that moment there just kind of touched a lot of people, you know, and um, and it, it just kind of goes to show that you know even people out here who are who are doing their thing don't always come from the best of backgrounds, you know, and so you know I think this, that one just was real touching to me, you know. Okay, so what I'm getting as a theme from the many people that I've interviewed today is that a lot of these throwback shows are actually taking them to a moment in their lives where they didn't have that structure or that support and it filled a void, it filled a gap in that sense. So it was all about family, it was all about unity. Is that about, sound about right? That's, that's right. Well, uh, a show that sticks out to me is The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. For sure. Well, every episode, there was always a deep message behind the episode. I mean, it was comedy. You had a family, a prestigious African-American family, but they were still down to earth. And it was amazing because Uncle Phil represented a certain type of brother who made it, 
but he helped out Will Smith, you see? But then Will Smith represented a certain type of brother that was from the streets of Philly, but he ended up staying with this prestigious family and he ended up making it. So just showing the different angles of, of coming up and then making it, but still staying down to earth and helping. That's what it was all about to me. That's what's up, man. So it was all about enriching. It was about ownership. It was black power. It was black love at the same time because there wasn't too much of that going on on television. Unlike current time, it's very far a few shows that you can really find and reach that, you know. Exactly. So the more during the 90s. And, exactly. and the more you go back, the more it was, you know. So yeah. Exactly. So with that being said, his favorite show was The Fresh Prince. It was definitely something I grew up on. Too. I mean, okay. don't get me started. Now we're going we gonna to talk for like 45 minutes, man. But right, right, right. <laughs> All right, let me know what's going on, Stress. <laughs> what was your favorite throwback TV show? Throwback TV show. And let me know the impact it's had on you. Well, I mean, as far as like TV shows, I mean, I'm a huge like old, you know, Simpsons fan, Simpsons fanatic. But as far as like TV shows, I would have to say it's kind of a toss up between Old and Living Color and Married with Children. Yes, yes, and I, mean, I watched I got, both of those. I kind of got like a sixth sense of humor, and it's like, you look at Mary, you look at Married with Children. It was just so raw, and it, I mean that show went for a long time. I mean Married with Children had like almost 300 episodes. Um, you look at In Living Color and look at how many people that that show gave starts to. I mean from, you know the 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 Wayne's family. I mean they blew up after that. I mean Jim Carrey. I mean he became a mo like. Multi million girls, the you know J Lo, uh, you know uh, sh you know Sean Jamie Fox. J look at look at where Jamie Fox is right now, you know, and that you know we came from in Living Color, and that show was so funny on so many different levels, coming from you know no matter what kind of background you were, you know with the topics that they touched on, you know current events and stuff like that, they had that kind of sick twist that they put on everything that just was just like wow I can't believe that. Urban Saturday Night Live in a way. Because it came on every Saturday night, and it was right before Apollo. Because <laughs> Apollo was a, it was a throwback too. I used to love Apollo. I used to always wanted to be an Apollo. So man, you know, it's like my parents. You know, it's like my my, my dad was kind of uptight, you know, and it's like you know I came from real kind of straight and you know forward background a little bit. You know, I was real different from my parents growing up. But it's like you know even even my pops loved in living color. It's like we used to clown on that show, man. Show, man. It's a classic. Hey, but what was Jim Carrey before when he was on Living Color? James Carrey. James Carrey. That's right. They be playing reruns like every morning. I just seen it this morning. They were like, "Oh, we got a new member of the uh, In Living Color crew." And Jim Carrey was holding up his daughter, and you know, it was like yeah. the first time that he put her on TV. And that was like his oldest daughter. I mean, this is like 20 years. That ago. That was a long oh, time ago. Shit, you know, so she's got to be old now. All right, now real quick before we end this little segment, I want y'all to give a little shout out. I know y'all got a couple of uh, folks that are on the label Schoolboys Entertainment oh, yeah, that y'all might want to shout real out short, real quick. Real short and brief, you know. Shout out to the whole gang of Schoolboy Entertainment, Juju, Orion, Superstar, DJ Dan Arkey, myself. I want to thank a shout out to myself, Stress the Mad Hatter as well. You know. Oh yeah, and one more shout out too, my uh, both of my sons, Furious and Corey. Love you, Daddy loves you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to my brother Ken C. Of course, you know our other artists, Orion, Superstar. DJ Danarchy, Juju, the Oddity. Shout out to my kids, you know, Raymond, Soraya, Eddie, Charlene, you know, Daddy doing it. You know, my whole team's gonna be coming up. We're about to be the next Def Jam. You heard it. Schoolboy Entertainment, check us out. You know, social media, all that. All right, thank you guys so much for being on Reminisce Over You. What's good, everybody? My name is Dispute One. I am your host. This is Reminisce Over You. We are located downtown at the Bedlam Lower Town in St. Paul, Minnesota. Good interviews, good opportunity today because today is our debut show. So with that being said, I also have one of the Twin Cities' more larger independent labels. We're not talking Rhyme Sayers. We're not talking any of that. We're talking about Pledge Empire. And I'm going to pass the mic and let them break down who they are and how they represent themselves. My name is Orlando Walker, um, good business affiliate to, to Pledge Empire. Uh, we just come out here, we do our thing, and I uh, appreciate these, these brothers giving me an opportunity to, to rock with them. So. Yo, my name is Sad Linus. Uh, I'm a, a rapper and co-owner of Pledge Empire Records. I put out an album called Christlike about a year ago, and uh, working on a movie and a new EP. So. 
Hey, what's going on? My name is Stilo Real. Um, I'm a rapper in Pledge Empire Records. I just put out an album not too long ago called uh, it's, uh, MLK and Solipsism, which was last year. I'm working on a new project right now that's untitled. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I got going on. My name is Prince Carlton, Pledge and Power Records. I'm the owner of Pledge and Power Records. The guy who, uh, the behind the scenes guy, the one who put the tours together, make everything come out on time, uh, manage, uh, do all that type of stuff, that good stuff. <laughs> All right, so what you saw was the four individuals here that make a lot of things happen with Pledge Empire. And for the fact that they are pioneers, it's only fair that we get them on a pioneering program and let them understand how this operates. So today, we are going to celebrate throwback television shows, and that's kind of the key and the theme for today. I wore my theme, Sanford and Son. I always feel that he was the ultimate hustler, the junkyard man that had no winds, no glass ceiling. He made it happen. He said, Fred G. Sanford, the G stood for going places. You know what I mean? And that was the key. So, you know, so I want you all to think about a throwback television show that inspired you all to kind of be who you are, that, that one, the one show. Be a little brief about it because I got a lot of brothers here and I want to give everybody some mic time and kind of let me know what was your throwback TV show and what was so cool about it. Um, mine had to be in living color, to be honest with you. Um, it was just a, a bunch of different different ways of, of coming at comedy um, and I almost look at that in, as in life too you can you can come at life so many different ways uh, but one of the big ones that stood out was hey man how you had to you had to have like six jobs to make it so that, that was one of my my throwback moments for me uh, one of mine is gonna be mr. Rogers neighborhood man cuz <laughs> yo he was he was calm you know what I'm saying he was collected he ain't never get upset about nothing and you always wondered like yo he might be a little crazy, but you but he never let you know that. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I got to give it up for Mr. Rogers. I, I ain't as old as everybody else, so. <laughs> I, 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 nah, nah, I'm going to say Fresh Prince. And the reason I say Fresh Prince is because Will was actually a rapper. So it's like he showed the diversity of not only being a rapper, but also being able to act and all that type of thing. And I mean, everybody who, somebody was on Fresh Prince, like that was before Martin and everybody started like having you know, co-stars and stuff. Fresh Prince had everybody on there. So I'm going to say Fresh Prince. I'm going to go ahead and say the Cosby Show. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we, we know what's going on with Bill Cosby right now, man. But you, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it was a good family show during the time. You know what I mean? It showed black families. You know what I mean? They had a little money in their pocket. You know what I mean? A little positivity You know what I mean? for the black community. So that's why I picked, that's why I picked the Cosby Show. I thought we had this debate one time. You know, some people always try to win arguments. So one day we was debating, and uh, I was like, yo, Cosby Show the best show. And he tried to say Moesha was better than the Cosby Show. I'm like, dude, I'm like, man, you're just trying to win Not arguments. Not true. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's see here. We have throwback shows that went to uh, Unity. They showed support, but at the same time, Moesha? Come on, man, Moesha. Oh man, I, I, man, Mo okay, you know, Bill definitely, man, everybody, everybody loved Bill Cosby, you know what I'm saying? The Coogee sweater, I mean, my man put Coogee on the map and had no stock in it whatsoever, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, you got your throwback moments from Pledge Empire, all the individuals. Once again, I'm going to pass the mic so they can name themselves off really quick. I'm going to tune out, and that's how we're going to operate, man. So who we got one last time? You got Orlando Walker. Sid Linus. Stilo Real. Prince Carlton. And you got Dispute One, and we are Reminisce Over You. I'm here with Mike Dreams, and this is Reminisce Over You. Mike, tell me about this name. Mike Dreams, with an S. With an S, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a noun and a verb. Uh, I just kind of came up with it about five or six years ago just because I was really into the whole, like, dreamer thing about following goals and aspirations. And then I also wanted a name that kind of had my real name in it and hybrided it together. So I was sitting in a, a show one day, and I was just like, I'm going to go with Mike Dreams, and that kind of went from there. So that's been the thing that stuck with me. Great word. I like that. That's a great story. So uh, back to sort of your work a little bit. I know I said we weren't going to talk that much about it, but on Reminisce Over You, we can talk about pretty much what we want to. Um, let's get back to where you got started. You mentioned that you went to South High School for a while and then you went to Brooklyn Center. Yeah. And um, that's around your junior year, I believe you said, where you started uh, writing and rapping. 
Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the first time that you got in front of an audience of more than five people um, to share your work. And let me know about that experience, what you were feeling. Um, it was a new experience for me just uh, to be in front of people. I had already been doing like acting and stuff like that in school, so I kind of was familiar with it a little bit. But uh, it was a new experience. My first time really was in front of like the talent show back at Brooklyn Center, and uh, we ended up winning actually. And uh, it was really cool and just uh, getting rid of that first, you know, those first time jitters and those, uh, you know, being able to connect with the crowd and figuring out how your craft can, you know, influence other people and inspire them. So from then on, I kind of expounded upon it from there. And so do you sort of build off the the energy or even the feedback that you're getting from your fans or the people who listen to your music um, as you go forward writing new work or are, is it just experiences from life that you're drawing from? I think it's a combination of both. I uh, like to write about my life a lot and I be, uh, mainly because I like to put out what I'm feeling, what I'm going through and see who relates and then that does help me when uh, I hear back from somebody who said this helped me through this or I can relate to this and that's always inspiring. I think it's uh, vital for us as human beings to understand each other better and what better way to do it than do music and art. Absolutely. Um, I have conversations with good friends of mine about the power of music um, and how it's universal. And so I really appreciate you touching on that with your work, um, especially at such a young age. How old are you? I am 26. 26 years old. And are you single? Yes, I'm single. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike, um, for coming on Reminisce Over You. I hope you enjoyed the show here at the Bedlam Theater. And I have my dear friend now, Rachel. I met her here at the Bedlam Theater. Rachel, we were having a little bit of a conversation about your previous work and uh, my work as a designer now, but you used to work in a shop that altered wedding gowns. Yeah, I sold wedding dresses for seven and a half years. Okay, awesome. So what I want to know about that experience, you were telling me a little bit about a story of a client that you guys had that sort of... Um, catapulted you into this whole other area of philanthropy. Yeah, so I worked with a bride who, you know, the moment that a woman finds her wedding dress is like a really kind of, you know, it's an epiphany of some sort. Sees herself in her dress and all of a sudden everything else kind of falls into place. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, for this particular girl, um, there were certainly tears, but they were different kind of tears. She turned to me and said that she didn't think she was going to get to live to see this moment. Um, and I was taken aback. I had no idea what she was talking about, but she was 26 and a breast cancer survivor. And it still gives me goosebumps every time I say it, but um, she, she changed the course of what I was doing and I knew that I wanted to do something to help women like her. And then so what, what, what did you do? What did that experience, um, how did that sort of shape how you moved forward from that point? So I created a nonprofit organization called Dresses That Heal. Um, and I used the wedding industry to raise money for women with breast cancer. Um, we sent them on retreats where they could uh, have group support um, and experience things like kayaking and canoeing so that you know their diagnosis didn't define their life. And lastly, before um, we sort of end this interview, mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about your last experience, okay? Okay. At a movie theater. <laughs> oh my goodness. My last experience at a movie theater, I went to go see Rosewater. Oh, okay. It was a John Stewart documentary um, about a man who is uh, basically kidnapped and terrorized um, within his country. And um, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing film, uh, not for the faint of heart, um, but it was, it was very impactful and, and it was a great, great film. Impactful in what way? Um, you know, I, I really think the element of social justice in documentaries is very important um, and helps to kind of educate but also bring a, like a real life concept to, you know, these sorts of issues. And so it kind of looked at his life story a little bit and how, um, like what the background of his character was in a way that you don't always get when you pick up the news and see these tragedies. Right. You know, it, it helped to kind of bring all those things, humanize him, make the More issue. Just like a headline. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was amazing. Amazing. I might have to check that one out. You should. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for sitting and chatting with me today. I'm so happy to meet you. Yeah. And I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Thank you so much for your time.